I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. This year's election for Orange County District Attorney just got a little more complicated, with word that longtime Republican DA Frank Phillips has had a change of heart, announcing today that he will run for re-election after all. Phillips' statement of candidacy comes after he had announced his decision to retire at the end of the year. During his news conference back on January 30th, Phillips had said he uh, could not commit to serving another four-year term. But in a statement today, Phillips said he had reconsidered and has the energy and enthusiasm to continue serving. It means he will now seek re-election to the post that he's held for the past 28 years. Shortly after Phillips' retirement announcement, uh, fellow Republican David Hoovler, uh, current Deer Park Town Councilman and former Assistant District Attorney, formally announced his entry into the DA race. And since then, Hoovler has received the backing of some town GOP committees and Republican leaders. Phillips uh, says he will now uh, appear before members of the Republican committee to seek their support. His decision to seek re-election sets up the possibility of a Republican primary later this year. Hoovler said today he is moving forward with his campaign and is in it till the end. This was where Keith Chapman was gunned down back in September. The 24-year-old Newberg man had been shot with a semi-automatic rifle along William Street. Chapman staggered off, uh, then collapsed in the doorway of an apartment house on Renwick Street. He was later pronounced dead at St. Luke's Cornwall Hospital. Today, the gunman, 33-year-old James White of Newburgh, pleaded guilty to a first-degree manslaughter charge. White is expected to receive a 15-year prison sentence when he's returned to an Orange County courtroom April 11th. Richard Saltzman won't be serving any jail time. The retired former Kingston fire chief was sentenced to a one-year conditional discharge after pleading guilty to four misdemeanor charges of offering a false instrument for filing. Saltzman was charged back in January after a state com comptroller's audit determined that he had received more than $16,000 that he was not entitled to. Prosecutors say he had uh, prepared payroll documents that allowed him to get the extra pay. As part of the sentence handed down today, the former chief will pay restitution of more than $16,000. Catholics throughout the world are filled with hope for the future following the historic announcement of the selection of their new pope, the first non-European since the Middle Ages. The choice of Jorge Bergoglio of Argentina, the new Pope Francis, was a bit of a surprise to many, including Father Dennis Nikolic from St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Middletown. He said the news would be welcomed warmly by members of his congregation. I think it's going to have a great meaning to the whole universal church uh, throughout the world, um, certainly to our area. Um, we do have some people who are from Argentina that have settled in the area. I'm sure they'll be very ecstatic, but not only them, but I, I think everyone, I think the whole chur church rejoices uh, in the choice that was made. There's always excitement. Everyone's, you know, looking at the balcony and looking at the curtain and waiting to hear the announcement and, you know, what is he going to be called and where is he from? So I think it's, it's great uh, excitement and that excitement and that enthusiasm continues uh, as we follow and as we see what comes from the pontificate. Pope Francis uh, will face a series of challenges in his role as leader of the Roman Catholic Church. They include the push for changes within the church, the declining number of priests, and sex abuse scandals. Three people were sent to Orange Regional Medical Center Wednesday afternoon for treatment of undisclosed injuries following a crash on the quickway. It involved a tractor-trailer rig that had flipped over along Route 17 in the town of Wallkill. Two other cars were involved. One of them had its uh, roof sheared off. Car passengers had to be extricated from the wreckage by responding emergency personnel. State police were investigating the cause of the crash. No further information was immediately available. They've been making their mark, literally, on outside walls throughout the city of Kingston. They are the graffiti artists whose uh, painting has been popping up at various locations. Now Kingston City Police are reaching out to the public in hopes of getting information that uh, will lead them to those responsible for the graffiti tags. Anyone who uh, can aid in the investigations is asked to call Kingston Police at 331-1671. Praline, 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 
L-I-N-E. And the pressure was on in the Orange Ulster Boses Auditorium last night. 18 7th and 8th graders were battling word for word during the annual Orange County Spelling Bee. Round after round, competitors uh, got tripped up until only Michael James of Cornwall Middle School and Catherine Cavallucci of Valley Central Middle School were left, surrounded by plenty of empty chairs. And finally, in the 32nd round, James uh, nailed the word equilibrium, while Cavallucci misspelled the word illusorious. For the new spelling champ, visually picturing each word on the floor in front of him paid off. I was very nervous. I, well, half of them I was guessing. I didn't really know some of them, but overall I did know some. Uh, do you do you study words or talk to me about how you uh, prepare for this? Um, I study words sometimes, and like like the last word I knew from like uh, science class. Throughout the whole thing, I knew if he had ever seen the word, he would spell it correctly. He has that kind of a mind. I think he has a photographic memory. His average in English is 100 all the time. He is usually the last one to finish a test. He's known for that, and he always gets 100. He always gets the top score. Michael's teacher has further reason to be proud. Her prize student is now qualified for a spot at the Scripps National Spelling Bee, coming up in Washington, D.C. this May. We'll be dealing with more cold weather as well as some snow flurries in the days ahead. It'll be partly sunny and chilly Friday with temperatures getting up around 45 degrees. Saturday will be cloudy with a few snow showers around. Temperatures Saturday are not expected to get any higher than 40 degrees. We'll start your day with the information you need uh, by reading uh, tomorrow's Times Herald Record. And when news breaks, you will find it right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.